To take advantage of the data annotations that we just added to Restaurant, we need to use a data structure known as model state inside of ASP.NET Core. So anytime that ASP.NET Core performs model binding, so it moves data into my model like a restaurant or even into a simple integer parameter like restaurant ID, the framework will keep track of everything that happened and record that information inside of this data structure called model state. I have access to model state through a property that is available on my Razor page called model state. And I can walk up to this data structure and index into it if I want to find out specific information about, let's say, the model binding that occurred for the value with the name location. I can check, for example, does this have any errors? So if location is a property on the restaurant and it has a required attribute and the user passes an empty string, that's going to raise an error that gets included in this errors collection. I can also look at attempted values. So if the user tried to enter the string XYZ into a property of type int or float or some numerical value, the only way to see what the user tried to type is by looking at this attempted value because it can store anything. I cannot look at my model property to see a possible value. But these are the types of low-level operations that you typically don't need to worry about. Tag helpers like ASP-4 use this information all the time. Typically, all we care about is walking up to model state and asking, is this valid? Is all the information that got passed in via model binding, is it all valid? Did it pass all the validation checks? And only if that is true, do I want to go to the data source and say, I have valid data, let's save it into the data source. If the model state is not valid, what I need to do is present this edit form again and allow the user to fix any errors that have occurred. Let's try this out. I'm going to save everything, come back to my browser, and I do want to point out now that we're editing data and we're making changes to the application, at some point you're going to refresh the browser and all the original restaurant information is going to appear. And that's because we're using an in-memory data source. The in-memory data source, as I mentioned earlier, is only good for testing and development. When the application restarts, we lose all the changes that we've made. So we're looking at the original restaurant information again. Once we hook up to a database, that particular problem will go away. But let's now try to edit Scott's Pizza. And what I want to do is blank out the name and blank out the location. And now when I click Save, it doesn't look like anything happened. I don't know if the restaurant was saved or the restaurant was not saved. I can come back to the list of restaurants. And this looks good because it looks like I did not save invalid information, but I also didn't tell the user that there was a problem. So if the user tries to submit a blank name, I need to provide an error message. And that's where the tag helper ASP dash validation for comes in to be helpful. So let's create a span with a bootstrap class of text dash danger and use the tag helper ASP dash validation dash for. What I can say is that I want validation messages that might be in model state for restaurant dot name. And what ASP dash validation for will do is look into model state, see if there's any errors for restaurant dot name, and if so, display the associated error message for that particular error. Now the data attributes that we have used, like required and string length, they provide some default error messages that we will see on the screen now that we're using a validation span. But let me copy that span and also paste it here where we can display validation messages for restaurant.location. And finally, I will also place that here for our select. First, let me fix the formatting here so that I don't have this character on a separate line. And then I'll paste in my span. And then I just want to change this from restaurant.name to restaurant.cuisine. Let's save all the files, come back to the browser. What I'm going to do is try to submit a restaurant with an empty name again, and I can see the name field is required. Also, if I do this with location empty, the location field is required. So now the user knows when they are editing that they need to provide a name and location. But there's still one more thing that we can add to our edit page that will make it function a little bit better. I can see this if I make a change, click Save, and then I'm sitting on this page where I can see the changes that I've made. And if I try to refresh this, as some users will try to do, I have a warning to confirm my form resubmission. Let's talk about that next.